Good afternoon, I'm Hanneke Wokelare, you're watching Political Live. Welcome to our discussion on summertime travel. As a mobility reporter for Politico, I spent the past weeks and months uh, covering EU efforts to coordinate travel um, during the pandemic. Many of us have gotten accustomed to crossing borders in the EU without a second thought. Well, that's changed during the pandemic. Uh, the fear of imports of the virus mean that uh, pre- and post-departure um, tests and quarantines have become a common thing. And what's more, those restrictions don't always, always match up from one country to another. But things are changing. The rollout of vac vaccines is picking up speed. And uh, last week, negotiators of the Council and the Parliament reached a compromise on COVID certificates, or EU digital COVID certificates, as they are called now. The idea is that those certificates certify whether travellers got a test or a vaccine, um, or whether they are immune after an infection with the coronavirus. Um, and on top of that, EU leaders yesterday, not so far from here, uh, agreed that a recommendation on travel within the EU sh should be updated also before the summer. So a lot is moving. We're here to discuss what it actually means for our travel plans this summer. We'd like to thank our partner, the European Travel Commission, for making this virtual event possible and, of course, also our audience. You can participate too by tweeting at LivePolitico or by asking us questions. Uh, there are several possibilities there. If you are joining us from our website, you'll find that Slido is embedded on our website. Uh, you could also ask questions um, if you are joining us from Twitter or Facebook or LinkedIn um, by accessing the app on your computer or on your phone. Just uh, don't forget to use the hashtag SavingSummer when you're asking questions. Also, we, we really love it if you mention your name. It's always nice to know where the questions are coming from. If you log on to Slido, you'll find that we've also launched a poll. Uh, it asks the questions, what do you need e-institutions to do to save your summer holidays? Uh, it'd be great if you let us know. Uh, now, before we get started, here's a word from uh, Luis Araujo. Uh, the president of the European Travel Commission. Thank you, Anne. And, uh, and bravo, you spelled my name perfectly. Thank you so much. Um, Anne uh, and Politico, thank you so much for this partnership in the name of the European Travel Commission. Uh, this is the perfect timing to have a frank debate uh, on what is needed to save our summer, but also what is needed to restart our sector. I am speaking here in two capacities. Uh, as president of the European Travel Commission, representing the national tourism boards of Europe, but I'm also speaking as a European citizen who wants to visit his friends abroad, who wants to explore Europe again, and wants his freedom of movement back. Uh, needless to say that Europe's travel and tourism is going through an unprecedented crisis. Uh, the Commission's uh, uh, industrial strategy recognizes our sector as the hardest hit. Uh, and we must not forget that tourism generates almost 10% of the European Union GDP. 90% of tourism businesses are very small, small and family-owned enterprises. 23 million workers every state member economy has been affected. After a very dark year for tourism in Europe, we are now at the make or break uh, moment. Resilience is at its limit. It's time for us to adopt uh, a risk-based approach and reopen. We have to save the sector uh, and summer is vital, not only because Europe depends on the season, but because it will mean coming back to normality again in tourism. ETC recent survey revealed a strong demand amongst uh, Europeans to resume travel. 56% want to take a trip by this August. And of those, nearly half wish to travel to another European country. After a year, more than a year, the situation has clearly improved. Uh, the latest ECDC data uh, shows that the third wave is receding throughout Europe. Uh, vaccination is rolling in every country with great results. The European Commission yesterday announced that already 46% of the European Uni Union adult 
population received the first dose of the vaccine. National health systems are being gradually released of the pressure. There is more scientific knowledge on the causes of spreading after one year of studies. There are more effective and affordable ways to test and identify the virus. Also, uh, as we speak now, the European Parliament is holding a vote on the EU digital COVID certificate. Uh, of course, as ETC, we applaud the European Union institutions for their hard work and this speedy agreement, a process that would take years in normal circumstances, took two months to be approved. So thank you so much and congratulations. But this agreement still leaves room for fragmented implementation. So we urge the European Union governments to ensure the certificate is introduced across the bloc by July 1st. Any delay will undermine the chances of a very successful recovery. And as we say in tourism, a day that passes is a day we lose. Uh, we also thank, and I take this opportunity to thank so many enterprises, associations, organizations, public and private that have joined forces together with ETC also in calling on the European Union for action on key policy priorities for the sector, especially in these uh, crucial times. But if the situation has improved, if we have a stronger light at the end of the tunnel, what is missing? Why are we not back to action and full speed? What do we need to be more agile, more coordinated, more flexible? The answer to these questions uh, demands proper coordination, building new bridges between tourism and health and gaining trust also across sectors. And I say here, in tourism and in health. This is the time to rethink uh, once again, based on what we know so far, but also on what we have achieved and refocus. This is the time to change the perception of risky countries to risky persons, to change the principles and the criteria which are used to prevent mobility, to refrain from imposing additional travel restrictions on certificate holders. We won't revive travel if people still face the prospect of patchwork rules across the block. This is the time to take into consideration the progress other countries outside, uh, especially outside the European Union are doing. Um, this is the time to get quick and coordinated answers on subjects such as recognizing other vaccines, protocols of acceptance of these vaccines, etc. It is crucial that we avoid the repeat of 27 different set of rules for travelers. Europe must develop solutions together, leaving no place for fragmentation and unilateral actions. This is why together with uh, Politico, and I'm very glad to be here, we are pleased uh, and very honored to gather uh, uh, the panel and the following panel, the, panel. Uh, the Commission's Ms. Sastamonian to illuminate details uh, surrounding the COVID certificate, um, Ms. Thierry from the French representation to explain what the Council is doing to ensure harmonized travel and expand French plans for this summer season also. ECDC, Ms. Amon, to discuss uh, the risk assessment on health matters and how the tourism sector can ensure safe travel, uh, especially when according to ETC, um, according to ECDC, travelers should not be considered as a high risk population. And what can we do on our side to help the health authorities in each country to prevent the spreading. Uh, and also Aijin, uh, Mr. Gerogianis, uh, to tell us the challenges Aijin has already encountered in this new phase of opening. All of us, and I'm sure our viewers, uh, are eager to hear from this uh, great panel. Hopefully we will reach the positive conclusion that summer will be saved and tourism will be reborn in a more resilient and sustainable way. A final word to say that the European Travel Commission is ready 
and available, as always, to cooperate in restoring the mobility in Europe in a quick, in a quick way. Once again, I have to tell this, a day that passes is a day that we at Tourism lose. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Louis, for joining us this afternoon. You already uh, briefly introduced our excellent panel. Let me welcome them again. Andrea Mon, the director of the European Centre for Disease Prevention and Control. Dimitrios Garaganis, the CEO of uh, Aegean Airlines. Sara Sastamonian, the acting director general of the Commission's DG Justice uh, and Consumers. And Ossian Thierryo, the deputy anti-chief councillor of the permanent representation of France to the EU. Now, before we go on to the panel, let me remind you once again that you can participate in our event by tweeting at Live Politico and by asking questions, mentioning the hashtag Saving Summer. Um, I would also like to remind you that our poll remains up and running uh, for the duration of the event, so feel free to, uh, you know, to let us know what you think there. Now, before we get into the nitty gritty, I would like to um, gauge our panelists' taste for travel. Um, by a show of hands, who of you have already made travel plans or um, have booked a holiday? Okay, we, we have a mixed result. That should make for a, a very interesting debate. Uh, I wanted to start with the certificates. We've seen a compromise deal uh, last week, uh, but as uh, Louis already mentioned in his opening remarks, and what they agreed on is a mutually recognized certificate, not necessarily to drop all restrictions. Um, does that mean that the certificates fall short? Salah, I would like to ask you this question first. Thank you for the question. Good afternoon to everybody. Uh, uh, for us in the Commission, uh, reaching an agreement in such a, a quick time schedule is a great achievement from the both co-legislators. Well, the certificate it will be the basic tool to show that uh, people are vaccinated, that they have recovered, or that they are tested negatively. And that will help when the member states are uh, considering uh, their uh, uh, travel uh, arrangements, uh, their travel restrictions. Uh, because everybody will recognize the same uh, documents. Everybody can trust that these are uh, not uh, fraudulently uh, uh, received. And uh, that type of the common approach is there already the basis for this harmonization of our coordination, also of the travel restrictions that are based on the current recommendation already since last year. So for us, this was very necessary means uh, so that we can go further uh, by uh, by uh, taking down the restrictions. This is on the responsibility of the member states. We have to remember that anything, if there was a restriction for the uh, free movement, it was necessary because of the public health. So it is actually the whole European situation with the vaccinations uh, that are improving, which make it possible then to go towards the more free travel. Thank you, Sara. Um, Dimitris, are you relying on these certificates to boost travel? How important are they to your business? Yeah, I mean, it, it is, it is, it is, it has been an excellent step uh, at, at the European, at the EU level that, that this initiative has been taken. It is very encouraging that the decision process took uh, was very quick, and the implementation process hopefully will be will be as quick. As Greeks, we are very happy that our country did play a significant role in, in creating a momentum on this regarding this certificate, um, and also with the efforts that uh, have been done locally uh, for the digitalization of it. Now, in, in the substance of it, yes, it is a very important move. Um, it is the first standardized practice um, across the EU which allows travelers to, to benefit from the, from the increased momentum of the vaccination campaign in Europe and the, 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 keeping the, the increasing momentum of the vaccination campaign and, and enjoy the, the benefits of travel and moving across countries um, without, without restrictions. So um, it is a big step and we do hope that the implementation will be equally, uh, it will go equally well and, and equally, equally fast. Plus, plus the fact that there is a, a centralized digital infrastructure behind it, which guarantees uh, the no frauds and the, 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 the reality or the 
the authority of the certification is also a very important, a very important element for, for countries and for airlines. Uh, I'm glad you raised that. I actually wanted to ask you, so that I already raised the fraud issue. Is this a concern of yours? Yes, I mean, it, it, it is a concern because we have we have read in, in, in various reports in the past months about, about false vaccination certificates um, and, and so on and so forth. So the, the only way to, to, to get around such, such, a, such, a, such an issue is to have a digital implementation and one that guarantees uh, that, that the fraudulent, fraudulent uh, acts will be electronically monitored. And if there are such acts, they will be early enough being uh, recognized and, and taken care with. Thank you. Well, of course, we cannot forget that there is also still a pandemic. So, and Andrea, is it actually safe to allow travelers with a certificate to travel freely? Yeah, good afternoon, everybody. Um, I mean, we, we should um, keep in mind that uh, the proof of a full course vaccination prior infection or lack of current infection as defined by a PCR, which are the three elements that are included in the certificate, have very different levels of certainty regarding the risk of the individual of um, uh, uh, onward uh, transmission. Uh, the uh, the uh, recent infection and uh, full course vaccination provide some, um, uh, provide the uh, protection um, uh, 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 as we have seen from the accumulating uh, evidence uh, from, from uh, countries now um, uh, against the, or at least redu reduce the risk of, of infection from this individual. Uh, a lack of current infection proven by a PCR test prior to travel just proves that at the moment of the, the test, the uh, individual may have not been infected. But it doesn't mean that uh, in the course uh, of the travel, someone will keep non uh, 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 or remain non-infected. Uh, non so we have to keep in mind that these three elements of the travel certificate have different, um, um, how should I say, levels of, 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 of um, uh, 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 um, certainty of, of uh, protection of uh, um, uh, infection. Thank you. And the, this issue of the new mutations surfacing has uh, made many EU leaders quite worried. How worried should we really be? How much of a risk do these new mutations pose to our um, hopes of regaining the freedom to travel? Well, the, uh, that depends on the, um, uh, the characteristics of these variants. Um, uh, some of them are, have a higher uh, transmissibility uh, uh, combined with a higher risk of um, uh, 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 se more severe disease. But what is really worrying for, for us, or most worrying for us, that uh, escape the, the immune, immune mechanisms uh, that are um, uh, either conveyed by the uh, previous infection with the traditional variant or by the vaccine. That is what, what worries us and that is what we need to, to monitor very, very closely. Thank you, Andrea. Uh, I see a question on Slido from Clarissa. She asks, how will fraud be approached so we can can guarantee that the certificates are authentic outside EU member states? Um, I think that's a, a good question for Sala. Uh, thank you. Our, so uh, we are starting with the certificates um, uh, from the member states, and they are guaranteed to be, uh, uh, to be then uh, 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 truthful through the system of checking in digitally through a common gateway uh, that is then uh, uh, that will be handled by the Commission. Uh, the certificates, uh, that if they are outside authentic, that depends on the third countries. Similarly, as the certificates coming from the third countries to the EU will depend on our assessment of uh, that how well they are corresponding to the Europeans and if this if the uh, authenticity can be verified so we start from the member states but in the next steps the regulation stipulates for a system where we can in the uh, in the commission make an adequacy check of the certain third country and its system and its certificates that whether they are 
uh, complying with the, uh, some similar requirements to be considered then as or as authentic as our own. Thank you. Well, I wanted to briefly touch on a different element. Uh, we've seen yesterday that EU leaders asked the Commission um, to come up with a proposal to update their recommendation on travel within the EU. Um, and to do that before the summer, actually um, by the middle of next month. Um, Ossian, could you um, tell us what the idea, uh, the idea is behind this? Good afternoon, um, and thank you very much for, for the invitation. Um, so yes, um, well, I think the idea, as, as was said um, by the, the Director General of the Commission, is that um, the, the, um, the, the certificate is actually just a tool. So it's helping us to make sure that the information that we are using is reliable, uh, but it does not define um, how the certificate will be used at the borders. Um, of course, our aim is to facilitate um, uh, free movement within the EU. So that's why the regulation says that member states shall refrain from, from um, imposing additional measures. Uh, but it will still be for member states to decide um, which measures they will put in place in order to protect the health of European citizens or, or of people traveling. Um, and so in that sense, um, it's necessary to update um, this recommendation, um, recommendation 1475 that we uh, adopted last October and then that we updated in February. Um, so it's um, a recommendation that defines common criteria uh, to identify which zones are considered as risky and which zones are less risky, so, so green zones and, and dark red zones. Um, and then based on these criteria, based on the work of the CDC, uh, we define the measures that member states can or should put in place, uh, depending on the level of risk. And so, of course, um, this recommendation should be adapted because we have the certificate. So we will be able to uh, have reliable information on the fact that a person has been vaccinated or the fact that a person has undergone a test. Um, and this should help member states uh, lifting restrictions. Um, and that's the reason why, um, and, and of course, sorry, if, if we want to lift restrictions, um, as Luis was saying, we do not want uh, fragmentation. We do not want patchwork rules. So we need to have a coordination on this. And that's the reason why the European Council yesterday asked the Council to work um, on, on the recommendation uh, by the end of June so that it can be ready for the summer. Thank you, Asian. Uh, Sarah, if you could uh, weigh in here, what could we expect? How could you um, see this recommendation being updated in a way that improves coordination? Uh, this is an uh, issue that we are working right now. And actually, we have to also uh, work with the member states. We have, a, there's, for example, e-health network that we can ask uh, some questions. But the, the issues to touch is uh, that currently in the recommendation, it mentions, for example, that if the person comes from the uh, orange or the red area, so that there is a risk. Uh, there should be a, a quarantine or the test. This was the recommendation. So now we have to look how we are introducing the, the uh, aspects of the vaccine, so vaccinated persons who have the certificate or recovered persons who have the certificate. So this is an example where what we have to uh, reassess in the recommendation. Also, certain rules of the uh, recognition, so the mutual recognition now. Earlier, there were national certificates, so there was a recommendation on those. We will have the European level certificate now, so look that, that these are correct. And also look that uh, the communication and information to the uh, general public uh, is then also up to date. Everybody needs to know what are the rules. Right, thank you. Well, um, the the certificate deal did leave a few questions unanswered and we have a couple of them actually in our in our slido tool so um we have a question here um a name wasn't mentioned but um they asked how um 
long the result of a COVID test might remain valid. Uh, is this something that could be uh, tackled by this uh, updated recommendation? Uh, Sarah. I would ask actually there, uh, this is, uh, all this depends on the uh, scientific evidence. So I would, uh, I would ask in this case that Andrea comments on that one, because that depends also then uh, uh, what we are recommending, there are PCR tests and the, the uh, rapid antigen, antigen tests. So uh, there we will need to rely on the scientific advice and guidance that we are getting also from the ECDC. Right. Well, let me throw the question straight to Andrea in that case. Um, do you see it as a possibility to streamline the validity of tests? Well, I think uh, that uh, has been a discussion since the beginning of the pandemic uh, to, to um, uh, uh, validate uh, and, and unify the um, uh, validity of, of, of these tests. Uh, what is very clear is that a test is a snapshot and uh, uh, so actually the validity is um, uh, 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 maybe already gone for the next day, depending on what the person is doing. Um, so uh, if someone um, uh, uh, does a test that is negative at one point and in the meantime uh, is engaging in in uh, direct contacts in in uh, mass gatherings uh, then of course there's a risk that the person gets infected maybe even before uh, the the result of the negative test is uh, is available so uh, i think um, we have to just be aware that uh, at the current situation where we have still a smaller part of the population uh, full, uh, fully vaccinated and uh, the viruses, including the variants circulating widely in the community, uh, testing alone uh, doesn't, doesn't do the trick. Uh, we still will have a certain measure of um, uh, distancing, mask wear, uh, wearing, um, and, and that has, has to be maintained until a large part of the population is, uh, is vaccinated. Um, and to the extent that EU leaders could and, and EU countries could agree that a test is valid for, say, 48 hours or 72, where would the ECDC uh, advise land? I mean, for me, this is not uh, a matter of, of 48 hours or 72 hours. It's a matter of what the person is doing after the test is taken. Right, thank you. So no clear-cut answer there. Um, we've, we've gotten a lot of questions on this uh, notion that one single shot of the vaccine might be enough to travel across the EU to specific countries. Um, that is something that the certificate deal left open. Uh, so, Oceana, I would like to ask you, um, why is that issue not yet uh, tackled under current uh, rules that have been agreed? And uh, do you have any indication whether France will allow travel for travelers with one single shot of a vaccine? Hmm. Um, yes, it's it's actually a good question and a question that many people are, are raising now. Um, I think the reason why it's not settled in the certificate um, is is because for the time being, in uh, as as far as I know, we do not have the scientific evidence uh, on this, um, and we do not have the scientific evidence. Um, uh, on on how well protected a vaccinated uh, vaccinated person is, and we're still, as as far as I understand, working on this scientific evidence, um, and so that's the reason why there's still uncertainty on on this point. Um, regarding France, um, um, my um, I think it's still to be decided, and and this will be announced in the coming days, probably uh, in the first week of June. Uh, so we will have more visibility at that point. Um, but it's, um, um, I think, for 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 the time being, um, um, it, yeah, we we have not decided. But I think we we would, for the time being, I think there's more scientific evidence on um, a full vaccination course rather than just one dose. But this is still to be determined. Right. And in terms of, of travel restrictions, whether they be testing or quarantines, is there a 
possibility, a probability that France will drop those uh, during the summer? Mm. Yeah, so as, as you know, um, to enter France today, you need to have a PCR test. Um, and so we are currently considering how we can adapt those rules now that we have the certificate and now that we can have a certainty that such person has been vaccinated. Um, and so, of course, the objective is to waive restrictions for people that have been vaccinated. It's, it's the objective of the certificate. Um, and so um, um, now, now, of course, we'll have to consider the health situation to adopt those measures. Um, and and um, as I told you, these will only be announced next, next week. Uh, so we'll have clarity on this only next week. But I think the objective is, if the health situation allows, um, to waive restrictions for vaccinated persons, to, so to make sure that they do not have to undergo uh, a PCR test, um, again, if, if the health situation allows. Thank you. So still a little bit of uncertainty there. Uh, Dimitris, I wanted to ask, how does that uncertainty and perhaps the possibility that different countries may still enforce different um, standards for these certificates, um, how does it impact uh, your airline's day-to-day -day business? Well, I mean, airlines have lived with this uncertainty, in fact, with lack of coordination, uh, even within the EU for the past uh, 12, 12 months. So we're used to coping with such uncertainty. Obviously, we would like to see this uncertainty being gradually reduced. And I think the steps that have been taken in the past couple of months in Europe, the, uh, the overcome of the initial glitches in the vaccination campaign and the gaining momentum of the vaccination campaign, plus now the agreement on the, on the, on the certificate are really two very good steps uh, in the direction of Reducing uh, reducing uh, uncertainty and creating a more a more um, a homogeneous homogeneous more homogeneous tools. Now, apparently th there will be that. That's what I also read between uh, the, on the from the from the statements from the health related people, including our ECDC, Mrs. Amon, that uh, there is some room left for the countries to decide what kind of, of measures they will take depending on the status of each uh, traveler, vaccinated, uh, PCR tested or uh, tested, um, or not vaccinated and non-tested. Non so I assume there will be those, those differences among the countries. We would still love to see a more harmonized um, guideline and uh, the commission apparently is working on that and they will announce something by the end of June as we just heard. Um, so if there is more, more coordination and harmonization of the rules, this will definitely be a good thing for the airlines. But even the two steps that have been taken now at the EU level and the two actions that have been progressing, the vaccination campaign and the, um, uh, the certificate are already two important steps to the reduction of uncertainty and hopefully to the gradual um, release and uh, uh, elimination of, 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 the travel, of the travel restrictions. What we don't want to see, though, is yes, we want the travel uh, business to open again. However, we want to have the certainty that there are not going to be any reversals. So we want the steps, the steps to be taken carefully. Uh, as, as airline, we have shown as airline overall airlines, we have shown that even in the last summer, that whatever recommendations or, or procedures are prescribed. Uh, we apply them very diligently and very disciplined, and we did it already last summer. And we will be happy to 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 see the more harmonisation regarding travelling coming from from the EU, and we will be abiding and applying those um, recommendations or procedures very fast and very disciplined. Thank you. Well, one of our viewers has a suggestion. He says, Fabio says, if this is the ECDC position, shouldn't the decision to ease restrictions be based on a high and safe percentage of immunity achieved in the EU population? Uh, Salah, that's a question for you. Uh, so here is a question about this criteria or, or, um, uh, or which should be taken into account when we are giving recommendations uh, for the uh, for the member states to harmonize them, I would first uh, remind that uh, yeah, it was when we started when the pandemic came and the public health uh, belongs uh, to the very much uh, or broadly to the competence of member states. 
it was uh, the one of the first uh, good uh, yeah, achievement was to harmonize these criteria that we are taking into account the member state take into account when they assess the risks and now what we have we have this common map that shows the risk from the, the green lowest risk to the dark uh, dark red so uh, we will consider now then how this uh, the information on the vaccinated uh, if that uh, should be taken into account as one of the criteria or not or whether the criteria that we have that are based on the notification rates and the testing rates, uh, if these are uh, continue to be sufficient of telling actually then the risk of the contamination, what is naturally the basic that we we'll have something which is proportionate between the free movement, our right, really a fundamental right, and still then the importance of uh, protecting the public health. Thank you, Sarah. I, I wanted to um, touch upon a different issue, an issue that's quite important to, I'm sure, many of our viewers, the issue of travel from outside the EU and how that impacts on you know, the EU's own attempts to, to open up travel within. So the Council last week agreed um, that travel from non-EU countries should be eased and that vaccinated travellers should be let in. But just yesterday, we also saw the French uh, President Emmanuel Macron uh, warn that the imports of new mutations that could undermine the vaccination rollout in the EU, um, you know, that that could be a risk and that the EU has to pay attention to this. Um, we got a, a question from Dan who asked, is the EU likely to have a common external border uh, in these circumstances? Um, Ossian, let me throw a question to you. Um Yes. Um, so, so as you say, this is a very sensitive issue because um, what we have seen in um, the last few weeks is that there are actually variants uh, of concern coming from third countries into the EU. Uh, and so, of course, with the summer, we will all want to open our borders and to welcome tourists. Um, and so, so the question is, how do we make sure that this reopening does not lead to a spread of uh, variants of concern. Um, and that's um, the reason why we have updated this recommendation that you were mentioning uh, on travel, on, on non-essential travel into the EU. Uh, and what have we done with, with this update? Um, the first thing is we took into account the fact that there were more and more people vaccinated in third countries. And so we opened the possibility of waiving restrictions for people that have undergone a full course of vaccination. Um, that's the first bit. Um, and then the other part is also that we have to take into account the question of the spread of new variants. Uh, and as you said, um, uh, President Macron underlined that this was a major concern because we do not want to open and then end up with, with a new wave. Um, so, so what we, we did in this update um, was first to develop a shared analysis of the situation of variants in, th in third countries. Um, and that's why we asked the ECDC to do a mapping of the situation of those variants. And um, this is actually a very important part because we need it we need to have a common analysis um, on which we can then base our measures. Um, and then the second thing that we did to, to um, make sure we can follow uh, the evolution of variants is, um, is putting an emergency break. Uh, and the idea is basically that if the, the epidemiological situation worsens in, in a third country, then we can adopt, we should adopt uh, restrictions um, to, to travel from that country. Um, so that's, that's uh, how we, we will um, uh, manage uh, the, the risk uh, of, of the spread of variants coming from third countries. Thank you, Asian. So uh, you mentioned ECDC assessment of these mutations also outside of the EU. Let me ask you, Andrea, um, how, where is your assessment? What does your assessment point at? Are there mutations we should be concerned about? 
Um, we are monitoring on a daily basis uh, the international sequencing databases where all these uh, sequences uh, with their uh, relevant mutations are, are uh, stored and um, uh, uh, deposited. And uh, so we are monitoring especially uh, for those mutations that uh, are known to impact vaccination or transmissibility. Uh, that doesn't mean that all these uh, uh, variants are really of concern or of even of interest, uh, but we are monitoring and seeing whether there are any, any clusters or increases somewhere. Now, regarding uh, the, the worldwide mapping, um, uh, the, the uh, difficulty with that is that uh, the assessment of such, um, the, the meaningfulness of such a sequence depends on whether these, uh, the sequencing in the country of origin is done in, on a representative basis. Um, and that is the difficulty for us to assess in all the countries around the world. Um, so we, we have uh, explained that, of course, we can um, uh, list what kind of uh, mutations we find around especially of the ones of concern that are now uh, since uh, recently joined by the so-called Indian variant. But uh, that doesn't mean um, necessarily um, a, um, uh, a good assessment of the uh, situation regarding this variant in, this, in, the, in the respective country. That is already sometimes difficult in the EU countries uh, uh, where the, the sequencing capacity is not um, uh, 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 big enough, but uh, it's even more difficult in countries where we have no um, uh, ties and no possibilities to check and, and uh, explore further. Thank you, Andrea. Um, Sala, where does that leave EU efforts to open up to third countries then, um, and particularly perhaps our closest neighbour, the UK? Uh, uh, as it was mentioned, uh, the Member States, uh, uh, the Council very recently uh, adapted uh, the recommendation concerning the entry from the third countries and added, for example, the vaccination uh, um, and that way the vaccination certificate to that list when the, uh, um, where the, the uh, persons uh, uh, vaccinated is easier to enter into the EU. So we are now then also um, um, working and being in contact uh, with the third countries as regards uh, this uh, adequacy of the vaccination certificates uh, that would be then part of these deals. And the UK is one of the countries uh, that uh, we have had the initial contacts. Right, I'm, I'm glad you touched up, uh, upon that because we also got a question asking whether we can expect UK to become a part of the certificate scheme. Your answer then is a cautious yes. We are we are looking at the matter, so it's one of the countries that we have had indeed uh, the first contacts. Thank you. Uh, we have another question here by Gunnar who said uh, PCR tests are too expensive. Will there be any incentive by, by the EU or by member states to, to bring these prices down and to ease tourism in the very near future? Um, let me start with you, Sarah. This was the question of the affordable tests was a very important part of the uh, negotiations uh, concerning the certificate regulation. And there are Already, it includes now the uh, 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 strong uh, message to the member states to ensure access to affordable tests. Uh, what are the elements that can, uh, well, how we have helped them to become affordable is, for example, of having organized the uh, joint European level procurement, which have helped help to bring uh, prices uh, down. Uh, we are also then uh, uh, procuring uh, through the Commission, through the uh, emergency support instrument uh, tests. So that was, we have done that with the 100 million euros, and uh, we took the commitment to do that with a further 100 million euros as part of the uh, negotiation package now with the outcome on the certificates. What we also, uh, what is was uh, one aspect to remind that uh, uh, we are, uh, the uh, rapid antigen, antigen tests are developing. We have their better quality tests and these are then uh, 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 much less expensive. So uh, in comparison, one can go uh, 
down to the, the uh, two to five euros in our last procurement concerning these ones. Uh, so when we uh, these are getting better, and that again it depends on the scientific evidence. Again, I, I give the ball a bit back to Andrea on in, in discussing this, uh, but that means that uh, it could be then one alternative to be, uh, which would be more affordable to use also for the travel. Uh, well, Andrea, there's an opening there. The rapid antigen tests, uh, can we put our trust in them? Well, it has been shown that these tests are quite um, uh, reliable when there is a high virus load, uh, meaning in uh, certain stages of the infection. Uh, when there is... Um, uh, um, Symptomatic people, it's it's a bit less um, uh, uh, convincing. So we have to see uh, uh, what these new tests can do. Uh, but uh, we um, have um, uh, heard from colleagues in countries that did uh, parallel testing with antigen and and um, uh, tests and PCR. That uh, even people with negative antigen tests were then positive in the PCR. Okay, so still some caution required there then. Um, same question for you, actually, Ocean. Is, is France, uh, would France consider accepting uh, such a test for access to the country without further restrictions? So for the time being, um, as you know, we ask for PCR tests. Um, um, and because we consider that they, as, as um, Andrea was saying, they are safer. Than, uh, than antigen tests. Um, honestly, I, I can't um, tell you if um, this is part of the of the waiving of restrictions that we will um, announce in the coming weeks. I think it's still under examination. Thank you. Uh, I would also like to ask your opinion, Dimitrius. Um, this this notion of, of free testing or affordable testing is it a concern of yours that these um, the potential of you know having to take several tests for travel uh, is scaring off uh, travelers of yours? Well, yes. I mean, obviously, any any process that will create a problem or an additional cost is 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 a deterrent for traveling. However, as I said earlier. Uh, important is yes, we want uh, travel to open, but we want to open under under safe and secure conditions, so we don't have any reversals. Um, it, um, uh, there is a lot of progress that has been made versus last summer. So, I mean, you know, there is a lot of scientific knowledge now that has been accumulated. There are a lot of efforts, um, the coordinated uh, purchasing and procurement of the vaccines, which has reduced costs for the less uh, rich countries in Europe. The statement that was made uh, earlier that even in the, the level of uh, tests, uh, there is a coordinated purchasing so that the cost of, uh, of the test PCR or antigen will be very, very low. So. Um, yes, we, we, we are hopeful that all these efforts will reduce the burden to the traveler um, and will allow and will give more incentives for the, for the travelers to, to, to travel again this summer. Um, I, I believe we should be more hopeful about this summer because we are in a much better situation versus, versus last year. Vaccination is there, um, and knowledge is there. Uh, the ample use of, of tests is, is there, so um, there are positive signs and we should not just all the time just complain about things. A lot of steps have been made in the past few months and we should be very happy about those steps um, and we should look forward to it. Now, restrictions will be there this way or the other and we cannot, nobody can, can promise a travel, traveling without restrictions. This is, would be nonsense, it would be against, against common sense when it comes to health issues. Well, thank you. One um, one other question, though, is will the certificates be ready in time? Um, and that's a concern that's been raised by well, by, by several players already. Um, Sara, are you optimistic? Uh, yes, we are optimistic. And we are uh, we are in very good way of bringing the uh, technical uh, uh, infrastructure what is needed for the. Uh, for this uh, issuance and then the verification of the certificates uh, forward. Uh, several member states have already done the pilot testing of this uh, existing gateway, so uh, that technical work is, uh, is progressing well, and uh, we are counting that we will have that technical part uh, ready uh, well uh, within the June, so that it can be also then uh, well 
test it under the MCAT, it is available as uh, from uh, July when this uh, the system functions uh, or and the new regulation comes into force. I remind also that uh, part of the uh, last um, uh, negotiation package was that there is a transition period for the member states. This means that also in the beginning, also with the uh, existing national certificates, uh, uh, one can travel. So it was it was to ensure that um, even if some member states would not have been ready with the implementation on handing out the certificates uh, 1st of July, uh, they can start with the existing national ones. So the free movement as such, that is uh, facilitated already then uh, when the regulation comes uh, into force for all the members. Okay, well, thank you very much. We are fast running out of time. Um, but before we, we wrap up the panel, um, we still have this poll up and running. And uh, before before I, I say goodbye to you, I actually wanted to know where your position is in this poll. You know, we asked what should the EU do uh, to save your uh, travel plans? We've seen that your travel plans, not for everyone, at least are, are fixed yet. So what is standing in the way? Which of these points need to be tackled first? Um, uh, Andrea. Well, I didn't see the points, uh, but... Uh, oh. I mean <laughs> Let me quickly uh, do a summary. So the options were put pressure on member states to actually implement the certificates before July 1st. Option two was reopen the EU's external borders to all travelers who have been vaccinated, tested um, negative or have recovered. And option three was um, publish commission advice on travel and the mit limit restrictions only to dark red zones. There is also an option all of the above, uh, all of the above and urgently. Well, it's certainly all of the above, uh, but I think uh, for me, it's also, it's also, um, I mean, the travel is one part, uh, but uh, it's uh, the travel certificate is, is, is uh, not necessarily uh, steering what is done within the country. Um, and uh, there, I think it's uh, really a matter of the, of the epidemiological situation and the uh, uh, measures that a country has still in place uh, for for their own citizens in the country uh, that uh, might um, um, sort of have a have a how should I say um, a little break effect. Thank you, and Dimitris, what's your take? Well, I, I would go with the majority. I believe number one and number two are the most important elements. Um, I, I also would undersign uh, what Mrs. Amon said. Uh, it is also the personal responsibility of everybody. Um, to make sure that the, what we have gained, all the countries in Europe have gained by reversing, the, by, by receding the third wave, we must establish that. We must, we must use the fact that the, the vaccination is progressing very fast, but we remain personally responsible in our behavior, um, maintaining the dropper guidelines and applying the guidelines in order to, to save that what we have achieved so far. It has been a painful 14 months for everybody, for every citizen, for every country. Um, and we should not jeopardize that. All the elements and the tools are there. The situation is completely different. It's, it, I believe it's a significantly more positive for this coming summer versus where we were standing last last year uh, this time. Um, and we should we should push in that direction, making our personal responsibility very very important and very strong. Thank you, Demetrius. Um, Sarah, the same question for you. Uh, I would encourage, uh, in order then to have this implementation that I found there important, we have worked hard to get the certificate for vaccinations, tests, uh, recovery, uh, that now it is implemented. But in order to implement it for the vaccinations, I encourage uh, uh, really everybody uh, who has it possible to take the vaccinations when, they, when it's their turn to have it. And thank you, Sana. And, and now to you, Ocean. Yes, I think as, as everybody, I would say all three answers. I mean, we need to implement the certificate as soon as possible. We need to coordinate um, on restrictions by adapting recommendation 1475. And we also need, of course, to communicate very clearly about those measures. So all, all three of them, but I think on all those three, we can be uh, very optimistic. So, uh, so yeah, it's a, a message of, of hope. 
you've already touched upon what our viewers decided and indeed our viewers are uh, very ambitious they want all of the above and urgently uh, so that's that's <laughs> Well, in a way, clear then for the EU, there are a lot of expectations. It's also a nice summary of our event today. I've heard a lot of optimism, but also quite a few open questions. And it's clear that people are uh, impatient to, to leave on a holiday. So um, I want to thank Andrea, Dimitris, Sala and Ocean for joining us today. And of course, I want to thank our audience for following along and sending us all these questions. Uh, also, thanks to our partner, the European Travel Commission, uh, for making this event possible. And please feel free to send us feedback at events at politico.eu. Thank you. Have a nice day. Thank you very much.